here is some small risk disclaimer for everyone. So today's webinar is intended for educational and informational purpose only. And participants shall not take it as financial or investment advice nor a trading signal. The accuracy and reliability of the information provided cannot be guaranteed. Pew Prime and I hosting the sessions are not liable for any losses or damage resulting from the use of the information presented. Participants are responsible for independently verifying information and considering their own financial goal as well as the risk tolerance. So here is just a very small risk disclaimer for you guys and then without wasting time, here's our webinar. So our webinar topics today is right. We are going to discuss about the candlestick pattern and then after today's webinar, you guys are able to learn uh, what is the technical analysis, how can we draw the support and resistance line, and then how can we match everything with the candlestick pattern. Because if you just focus on the candlestick pattern, it should be insufficient for you to identify a very, very good trend. Sometimes it's better for you to combine with the candlestick patterns uh, along with the uh, support and resistance level. Later, I will teach you one by one on how can we draw it, and then why is the technical analysis quite important for everyone. So here is some assumptions for technical analysis. So in technical analysis, uh, we can expect, we can try to understand what is the global investor think about it because sometimes historical tends to repeat itself. For example, sometimes, right, the price hitting, for example, let me show you. Sometimes if the price hitting certain lowest level, it will keep repeating hitting the level also. So this is the things that we mentioned historical trends might be happens uh, in future. So previously you notice gold keep dropping, then in future there might be still a chance for the gold to dropping if it's break below the support level. So this is a key thing that we can focus on it, technical analysis. Uh, on the assumption of the technical analysis, we are trying to use the historical charts to predict the future charts. And sometimes historical events tends to be happens and repeats. And then price move in trends by using the analysis, you able to better determine what is the short-term trends, mid-term trends, and long-term trends. From there, you able to set your sub, uh, stop loss level and TV level accurately. Because for example, right, if you are going to look at the overall charts, you are, uh, technical analysis is not just a chart for everyone to look at it. Sometimes technical analysis is the usage for everyone to understand what is the global investor, what is the global market participants are thinking on it. Because for example, if you are going to look at the goal, goal itself, it might not have any, any value. So we need to tend to understand what is the historical people tend to value the goal at by using the technical charts. So to put it in a very simple way to you guys, technical analysis is not just line charts, something like that. It's just one, it's, it's a one thing that let you understand what is the global investor thinking on it. For example, now the gold price reached around 2039. It means that global investors are thinking this is a very, very solid price. That's why they keep the price on it. So by looking at the technical uh, resistance level and support level, we tend to understand what is the key resistance level that investor might consider to sell. And then what is the support level that will cause the investor consider to long order. So by looking at the technical analysis, you're able to understand what's the world trader thinking. It's not just as simple as just a chart. It's the understanding for you with others. And this is one, what we call the connections, okay? And then now, first thing, I'm going to teach you how to draw the support and resistance level, which is one of the major things that everyone tra every traders need to learn about it, especially for new trader. So if you are going to remove for everything, support and resistance are very simple for you to draw because if, for example, if one product, the price keep testing one region, you can notice on the goal, it means that this should be forming a very, very good resistance level. If you draw a line, you can notice there is a good line here. And then after the goal price break above the resistance level, it go up. So here is some suggestion on it. Then you can just use the MT4, click this one, the, the straight line, then you just draw on it. You can notice once you draw it right, it's very clear that a lot of people trying to sell when it reach around 2002. So it's testing, break, drop, and then retest. So resistance line is actually one line that keep touching one, the, the, the higher price that previously keep touching. So after it's break above the resistance level, it continue to go up. Then we need to draw another resistance level. We need to scroll back on the previous charts on let and see what is the another high 
for the code that keep testing and then retrace back, keep testing and then retrace back. So this is one of the example for Go. So as for now, if you are going to look at the charts, you can see hash four, we are quite difficult to identify a, another resistance level, right? It's very, very complicated. So how can we draw it? How can we estimate the next resistance line? So I tr you can actually try to scroll back previously. So, all right. So as assume you cannot find any historical high according to the chart already. What you need to do is you bet it's better for you to scroll back. So when you scroll back, right, everything should be become clearer again. So you look at the previous charts, you can notice all. Oh, Previously, go testing this level, they start to rebound, re retrace back, retrace back. Here is a retracement back. And then after it spread above this level, it continue to go up. Okay, so you can look back on the historical charts and then you can actually draw a line from there. So let me show you how to draw the line. So you can just click here and then you can just draw it around this region. So it's very, very clear that every time go touching this area, it will con continue to draw further. And then next resistance level that we can focus on it should be around here. You can notice every time go touching 204546, I start to have some small retracement. This is why we mentioned as a very, very strong resistance level. This is very important because if you're trying to combine, uh, it's better for you to combine the resistance level as well as the support level with the candlestick pattern. It's better for you to identify the trend reversal by using both trading strategy. And this is then uh support resistance level, and then candlestick pattern. So I hope you understand it. So how can we, to put in a very simple term is how can we draw the support and resistance is you are just, you just need to identify the, the, the products that keep touching the prices one. So for example, 2000 is the prices that go keep touching, then this should be a very solid uh, resistance level. Touch a lot of times already, okay? And YC will start, if you are going to look at the support level, how can we draw it? Then we just look at the downwards. Look at the lower price. So if you can notice on the gold, gold price, after it's hitting this level, it starts to have some rebound. It indicating that there are still some buyers supporting the gold price when it's reaching around here. Okay, so this is a line that we can focus on it. Then we can draw on the support line. You can see that. So this is already proof that once gold hit 1930, Global investor might think this should be a very cheap price. That's why they decide to long it. Ah, so to put in the simple terms, resistance and support level is just not the line. This is a, a market expectations. You, you are using this kind of line to identify what prices that the global investor think they are very, very cheap. And then support level is one thing that you can use it to identify why, what is the cheapest price that the global investors are thinking according to the current uh, market condition. So here is the proof. Very cheap, then a lot of people buy it. Okay. And then to make it others, to make it clearer, maybe we can use the crude oil as an example previously. Lah. It's very good for you to understand. It's better for you to look at the charts on it. You can notice that crude oil price previously keep hitting 67.25. It started to rebound back. So next time, right, it hit again. Everyone is thinking, oh, of course, since previously after it's hit, it starts to rebound aggressively, then this time should be similar. Then it starts to rebound back again. Then this is the third time. Testing again. Then they think that oh, 67 is too, too far. It's very cheap. Then they continue to long it. So after keep testing and keep testing the support level, it slowly provides some indications for the for the global investor that every time crude oil price hitting 67.25 is going to rebound. So when have this kind of expectations on it, right? It will be successfully forming a very, very solid support level. So every time the price is hitting the lower level, it will rebound. So when you want to identify your entry price, then maybe 67.25 is a good price that uh, you can focus on it. So after that, after you draw a, a nice support level around here, then you bank your entry point, then you can notice that this sometimes it really will experience certain uh, rebound on it. So this is a very good uh, example that can show you guys on the support level sometimes are very important because for crude oil prices, right? It's quite different with the company value. A company, you still can try to understand uh, how much the company is going to earn. Why is the company intrinsic value as the Warren Buffett's uh, estimates? Why is the intrinsic value? Things like that. But if things turns to crude oil or even uh, cryptocurrency gold, how can you identify the value? How do you know how much should be the crude oil be? You cannot value the crude oil one. It's the market value, the crude oil. It's different with the company. Company is 
company's earning value, the intrinsic value of the company. But Croy, it just markets. Uh, what's marketing about it, then it will be the prices. So we can try to understand by looking at the support level, resistance level, by understanding what is the global investor thinking on it. So this is the power of the support level as well as the resistance level. I hope I'm not getting too fast. And if you guys have any questions, you can also uh, let me know. And if I'm going too fast, you can also let me know. I will try to slow down. So you guys already have a brief understanding about what is the support level and resistance level already. It's just a line. And then line that, the, how can we draw the line is when we look at the chart and then the price keep touching one, then this should be a very solid support level. Same with the resistance level. So the next support level, the next level is should be where? Let me show you the example. So the next support level should be around here. Look. You can notice on the price that after you keep testing, we start to drop back. Sorry, the next resistance level, which is also the previous support level. So if you notice this level, the prices keep touching, like keep hitting low and then keep touching it. This should be one solid uh, resistance level on it that you can draw on it. So let me show you how to draw it. Same thing, just click the line and then you just draw it. So if you draw like that, right, by using the historical trends, right, you can identify now 73.10 is a very, very solid support level. And then this is already the proof that after it's hitting 73.10, the support level around here, Crowd reason trends suddenly rebound aggressively. So you can notice it's quite obvious. A lot of investors are using the support line to understand it. You they, they are using the support line to understand what is the historical uh, fund manager are thinking about, what is the cheapest price that we start thinking about. It. So this is a very good entry point though, because previously on 2022 December, crude oil price hitting 73.10, it will rebound back. So now they retest back on the support level. A lot of traders expect this should be the time uh, for it to rebound because according to charts, it's very cheap and it's to rebound. So this is a live proof of the support level. And then what can we expect now? Will the oil price go further? Then you can draw back on the resistance level. So what is the resistance level? You can notice this should be the one of the level that keep touching one here. So this should be one of the solid resistance level for everyone to focus on it. So same thing. Once you identify a good prices that the prices keep touching one, then you can draw a resistance line. So you can look at it. Okay, so you can notice oil prices are currently uh, testing a very strong resistance level 78.85. Then maybe this should be the time for it to re retrace or not. Uh, this is a consideration. So this is how we draw the support resistance level. And then this is how we uh, do the technical analysis. So I hope you guys have a brief understanding about why it's the support and resistance level already. Don't worry, I will still continue to talk about the support and resistance level, but with some combinations. Uh, with some combinations of candlestick pattern that our topics that we are going to discuss today. So you already understand why it's the support resistance level. Then the next question is uh, how, what is the good time frames that we can focus to draw the support resistance level? Because if you are going to look at the MP4 or any platform like TradingView, it's going to show you like M1, M5, M15, M30, one hour charts, four hour charts. Then this might be confuse you. What should be a very good time frame that I should set uh, in order for me to set my support and resistance level. My suggestion is H4 and day one should be one of the good considerations for you guys to focus on it. If you want to focus on short-term trades, can, like 30 minutes trade, M5 trade, can, but the, you might be encounter certain risk lah, because if you look at only M5, like five minute charts, like five minute pattern, you are going to experience a lot of noises in the market. So it's better for you to longer the time frame because sometimes the longer the time frames, once it is break above the resistance level or the support level, everything will become quite solid. And then it will be continue your trend. For example, this is the oil market. And then we are using the day one time frame. So after it's break above the resistance level around here, it starts to increase aggressively. But if we are going to look at the M5, everything will be very, very complicated because M5, uh, you might be encountered a lot of uncertainty on M5. Uh, market because for example so suddenly one one big fund going to buy the oil market then you are going to hit your stop loss already so it's better for you to open a smaller positions but 
using a longer time frame for you to trade because it can reduce the market noises. So this will enhance your trading strategy. Lah. So M4 and H4 is, uh, sorry, day one and H4 is one of the consideration that we can focus on it and it needs some patience on it. And then gold is also another proof. Previously, this is a H4. So once it's break above the resistance level around 2000, it go up aggressively. Okay. And then if we are going to look at the H1, one moment. If you are going to look at the H1, right, everything might be a little bit confusing because you can look at the charts. H1, candlestick pattern like keep frustrating, frustrating, frustrating. It's very unclear. But com if you just click on the H4, everything will be much clearer already. The trend should be become clearer and clearer. So this is a thing. But I, I am not saying that the H1 or M30, M5 mini charts are not good. It's good, but if you are a short-term trader, you want to do like five mini trades, 15 mini trades, then okay. But if you are you, you don't want to keep affected by the market movement, then it's better for you to longer your time frame. H4 and day one is great. Open a smaller position, special margin are quite enough uh, from it. Okay, so avoid like you look at the five mini charts, any five minute movement, you getting nervous, then you can't do other stuff already. So this is the thing. Compared to H4, you just need like after four hour, you only look back on the charts. After day, after one day close, you only look at the charts and then the accuracy should be higher. Uh, this should be benefit for everyone uh, from my opinion. Uh. But of course, some trader will still go to short-term trade. It still can. It depends on your own uh, trading style. So H1, H4 daily is quite good uh, for us to focus on it and then we can use it to draw the support and resistance level. So some people might saying that oh, support and resistance level are very, very typical for us to draw. We are unable to draw it. So here is a solution for you, which is what we call the Fibonacci retracement. Seems like a very, very professional word, but the implication on it are very simple. Later, I will guide you one by one on how can we draw on the Fibonacci retracement chart. Okay. So Fibonacci retracement is one calculation method calculates by the Fibonacci, which is like this guy. He will try to calculate the historical price movement and then use in the maths to identify what is the potential support and resistance level. It seems like very complicated, but after I draw it, you guys will have a brief understanding on it. So now I'm going to teach you how can we draw the Fibonacci line by life. Let me see any Fibonacci example that we can show you. The Euro. Euro is one of the good considerations for us to draw a people. So how can we draw a people is we need to use uh, the MP4. And then you can see there is an F4 here. If you don't see it, then you can just click insert. Fibonacci here, retracement. So you can just click it. So after you draw it right, you can see there is a line over here. Right? Uh, how can we draw the line? How can we draw it nicely? Please? You can draw it from... The highest level draw until the lowest level so after you draw everything right you can notice all the support level and resistance level are nicely formed let me show you see whether there are another better example so i think uh, euro as well are quite good example for you so after you draw it right you can notice there is a support level and resistance level around here this should be one thing that could solid uh, if you guys lazy to draw wise a support and resistance level people actually might help you because once you draw it everything will come out by itself. And then another example is exactly USD. If I remove all the support and resistance level, just draw from it. So this is a brief understanding like, on the people. You can see that after you draw it, this should be a solid uh, resistance level as well as a support level. Then after you draw it, it will automatically show you guys one. Okay, so I will guide you how can we draw the people. Now you guys have a brief understanding why it's people already. Man. So it will show you support resistance. And then more detail on how to draw it. It's very simple one. So here's the theory behind it. So if the trend is upward trend, right? How can we draw a people? Is we by pulling the lower trends, pull to the highest trend. Then there must be a criteria that we do need a small retracement on it. If overall is a bullish trend, if it's overall keep going up, it's not advisable for you to draw people. How can you draw a people and how when the people should be effective is overall trend is our trends and then it experienced certain small retracement on it. Then you can draw a people drag from the lowest level, drag until the uh, highest level before its retracement. 
Okay, so here is an example on it. And then let me show you a chart. So you can notice that overall trends is our trend, right? But if we ignore here, if we don't have here, it's not good for you to draw a people. But if you notice there is a around 20 to 30% of the retracement area, then this is a very good people drawing. You just pull from the lowest level, pull to the highest level. You can notice all the support resistance level will automatically come out and then it's very, very solid. So, so for those who are don't know how to draw people, don't know how to draw support resistance level, people should be helping you. So this is another example. Overall upward trends, but there are some small retracement on it. So after you draw it, support resistance will all nicely form. You can notice on it. Very, very nice support resistance level. It cannot 100% accuracy, la, but maybe 70 to 80% accuracy is good enough uh, for the trader around the world already. So this is an example of how we draw the people. Make sure you need to identify a big trend, upward trend, and then you need to make sure uh, the product are exper experiencing 20 to 30% of the retracement on it. This is the example of our trend. And then our trend, simple also. We just draw from the highest level, draw to the lowest. And then make sure lowest level experience certain rebound. They need 30% rebound. And then here is an example on it. Overall downward trend. Then experience small rebound on it. Then this is how uh, can you draw the people line. You just pull uh, from the highest level, pull towards the lowest level, and all the support resistance, resistance level is going to form uh, on it. Okay, so I hope you guys understand more on the Fibonacci retracement already. If you guys have any inquiries on it, you can also ask more in the chat box. And then remember, this is an important note. Fibonacci retracement can only be used during reversal and not for instruments that has achieved new high or new low. So for those new high or new low, it's better for you to use the FIBO expansions that we are going to discuss this topic in future. So FIBO expansion is like, for example, this is a FIBO retracement. Overall, it's our trend. But no retracement is it's not good for you to draw the people already. So next strategy is better for you to draw like that. Fibonacci expansion. How can we look at it is we click here, insert Fibonacci, click here, expansion. So you can notice after you draw it, everything will come out. So this is how the Fibonacci expansions uh, happens now. I give you one example. I, I, I think I can show you live example on the goal. So imagine go no more historical price. This is the all-time high for the goal. How can we draw the people Nashi expansion? It's like that. Click here. People expansion click here. Then you draw on it. You draw right, you double click right. You can see there are three dots one. Let me show you. Okay. There are three different dots. First dot first dot, second dot, third dot. So you need to adjust the dots. How can we adjust the dot? Is by looking at the charts. The first dot is the, the lowest level on it. The second dot is the highest level, but the highest level experience returns retracement. This area is the third dot. So it's just like a triangle for you guys to understand on it. So one example that, let me show you how. So your first dot should be clicking here. Second dot here, third dot over here. It's like a triangle. Lowest level that showing some rebound trends here is the lowest level. And then keep going up, going up, going up. And then here should be the reason high already. If you draw here, we don't have the retracement, so cannot. It's, it's, you need to have like, after it's hitting the reason high, then it experience certain retracement. That's how you can draw the third dots on it. So yeah. So, According to the Fibonacci expansion, it's draw like that. Lah. So lowest level, highest level, before it uh, highest level. Then after it makes some retracement, then you can put your third dots around here. So you can notice after you draw it right, you don't even need to look back on the charts, previous charts to identify what is a solid support level and resistance level. It will automatically come out once. You can see that here is a very nice resistance level already. And then the next resistance level should be around one zero zero according to Fibonacci expansion stuff. So this is how we identify on it. If overall is our trend, and then we cannot focus, we can't can't find any high already. 
high level already. So Fibonacci expansion is, is going to help you. Okay. And then now you guys have a brief understanding about what is the support level, what is the resistance level already. And then you guys also have a, some understanding about indicator, Fibonacci indi retracement indicator, uh, Fibonacci expansion indicator. So now we are going to focus on the candlestick pattern. So it is a long wet journey, but candlestick pattern is very simple. You don't have to think something like very, very confused. You just need to understand and memorize the symbol on it. So today we are going to discuss on the can consider six uh, six major candlestick pattern that can able to assist you this guy, which is what we call the hammer, hangman, bullish and engulfing candlestick, morning star, evening star. Very, very simple pattern. So let's move on towards the first pattern, which is what we call the hammer. Hammer is very simple. It look like just a hammer. So that's why it call a hammer candlestick. Normally hammer candlestick is that one. So the body, candlestick body, and then we do have a very long shadow like a balloon. You don't have any shadow or you don't have any head one. It's only body as well as the shadow. So it's just like a balloon. This is what we call the hammer. So sometimes if you notice this kind of candlestick pattern, right, it might be indicating that there might be experience from current reversal. So from downward trends, move towards our trend is what we call the hammer. But from the upward trends, move towards the downward, downward trends is what we call the hanging man. So let me show you the real life example on it. So here is the charts. Overall is downward trends. But after that, it's forming the hammer. It starts to rebound aggressively. Okay, so if you guys have an understanding already, then move on. We are going to focus on MP4. If you guys can help me to find uh, what is a hammer, good hammer example. So let me see here, any good example on it. I think remain the same. Like crude oil should be one thing that we can focus on it that previously. A very, very nice camel, especially it's hitting the support level around here. You can notice, as, as we mentioned just now, right? Support level here is very, very important. And then you can notice here, especially the candlestick pattern around here, this candlestick pattern. One moment, let me make it clearer for you guys. You can see that here is a hammer, right? You can notice the candlestick is like that. The body is like that, but the shadow is very long. So after it's forming the hammer, it starts to increase aggressively. This is also another example. Very, very long shadow. Body very, very short. Then start to experience certain significant rebound on it. So hammer, like, it's, it's not like when you look at the charts, you look, oh, there is a hammer, then you long, and it's no, yeah, it's, you, you cannot like, you, you cannot like that. It's better for you to combine, make some combinations between the support and the resistance level. So you can see, here is a very solid fundamental, uh, solid support level already. Then you need to try to find certain strength reversal candlestick pattern on it. So you're trying to find a hammer. So once you find a hammer, then you wait for the third candlestick to open. If it still remain bullish, then it's a very good opportunity for you to focus on it already. Okay. So hammer, uh, oil is a very best example that you can prove it up. And then another thing should be others candlestick pattern. Let me see anything else. So as for now, Hamel should just a few uh, examples. But I, I do notice there will be another very, very good candlestick pattern, which is the bullish and carving and bearish and carving that I notice on the charts, it show more on it. So, okay, so I found another Hamel, but it's inverted Hamel. Lah. So Hamel, but inverted. So after it's formed an inverted Hamel, it starts to rebound back. So every time you notice this kind of candlestick pattern, right, it's, it, it won't form, keep forming one. So it's better for you to wait until certain candlestick form, then you entry on it. Okay. So you guys have a brief understanding about why it's hammer already. And then it's better for you to combine support and resistance level. This is very important. Engulfing. We are going to discuss bullish engulfing and bearish engulfing. So as for now, I do think the bullish engulfing and the bearish engulfing, right, is very, very good. Uh, for us to look at the, uh, the charts and identify the trend reversal. So, so it's better for you to combine support resistance level. Let me show you a lot of good example on it. The first example is the Dow Jones previous chart. Lah. Now we can't notice any trend reversal already. So previous charts, this area should be a quite 
Mm, I cannot say a very, very good support level, but it's a support level for everyone to focus on it. Sorry, before we go through the charts, I let you guys understand why it's bearish and governing and bullish and governing first. So bullish and governing, it's very simple. There are two candlesticks. But you need to notice the buy candlestick or the bull candlestick need to be bigger than the sell candlestick. So the card the, the the I repeat the buying candlestick, the bullish candlestick should be bigger than the bearish candlestick or the selling candlestick. So when it forms, it's what we call the bullish and coming. It's going to it might be experienced certain strength reversal. So you can com com combine with technical uh, resistance level and the support level. But the bearish and coming candlestick is another thing. Lah. Is the selling candlestick bigger than the bullish candlestick? Or buying candlestick. So when it's bigger, then it's the time for us to focus on the trend reversal on it. So here is the example. You can see yeah, red color is, is selling candlestick or bearish candlestick. After it's formed, the red color be a smaller than the green color, which is the bullish candlestick. Overall trends keep going up, trend reversal already. Okay. And then same along with bearish and going. So selling candlestick is the red color one, bigger, and then shadow. Ah, uh, sorry, and then the buying candlestick or the bullish candlestick smaller. Ah, so it's continue to drop. This might be complicated, but when I show you the real example, it might be clearer. So here is the one proof of it. Let me show you any battle. Okay. Let me show you, uh, if you look at the, this is a USD JPY daily charts. As we mentioned, daily should be become clearer, uh, should provide a clearer picture. So now we draw the support level right here. How can we draw the line? Why I draw the line around here is because you can notice on the chart, these prices have been keep testing it before. So once you draw it, and then you can just focus on the candlestick pattern. So you can notice on the chart previously, I think I zoomed the candlestick for you, Kira. Okay, so previously it keep dropping one, right? Then after it's hit the support level, it starts to rebound and increase aggressively. But support level is just one thing that you can identify a good buying point. What is the major catalyst that caused the USD GPI to go up further is you can look at the candlestick pattern. The candle, sorry. You can look at the candlestick pattern. You can see the candlestick pattern around here, right? They are actually showing a bullish and galvin candlestick. The buy candlestick, which is the green color, is much bigger than the red color bearish candlestick. So once it forms right, it going up aggressively. So this is a proof on it. And then another example should be Dow Jones. As we mentioned just now, you can draw a support level around here. So once it forms the bullish and galvin candlestick, it keep it just keep going up. So you look at here, very clear and nice. Bullish candlestick bigger than the bearish candlestick. Blue, uh, green color bigger than red color. It's a very good trend reversal. So one example, but the best example should be around here. Lah. So you can notice. And then you can combine with some support level. So let's see if here is a very solid support level. So here. You can see that here is a very strong support level. Okay, you can see here is a very strong support level, right? Because it has been testing quite a lot of time before already. Then if you look at the charts, you combine it. Imagine you are here. The price are testing a very strong support level and then end up bullish can, and galvin candlestick are formed. Ah, then you rebound aggressively. So it's better for you to make some combinations for the support and resistance level on it. Because uh, this kind of candlestick pattern, right, is better for you to identify trend reversal. So if overall is bullish trend, right, if overall is go up, it's not going down, imagine not going down, overall is keep going up one. But there's some formation of the bullish or bearish and governing candlestick. You, it's, it's, it might be not strong enough for you to identify the trend on it. So when, how can, how, how the candlestick pattern like bearish and governing, bullish and governing are strong is when the price hitting the support level or the resistance level. So imagine if this overall is our trend, but suddenly it forms a very long shadow 
a long bearish candlestick around here. It's still not solid because we don't have a very solid resistant level around here. So it's better for you to combine on it. So I hope I, I briefly explain about what is the bearish engulfing and bullish engulfing candlestick for you guys. So this is an example. Lah. Make sure hitting the resistance level or the support level, then you make sure the candlestick pattern have been formed. Bearish engulfing candlestick, uh, bullish engulfing candlestick has been formed. Then it's a very good trend reversal opportunity. Okay. Another thing is morning star. Morning star are very simple. It's just like a T, a small T, a small body, long shadow. So let's see if we have any morning star example. Okay, so here is a very, very good example of the morning star. This is the GBP USD. Uh, so you can see that uh, maybe it's up here. Let me zoom for you. Right here. Okay, you can see yeah. Uh, here is the star, morning star. The T a small T. So after it's forming a small T, right? And especially it's hitting a crucial support level, right? It keeps going up. So let me show you why we think this is a very crucial support level. Let me zoom out and then you it, it will be clearer. So you can see here the price around here, right? Every time it's testing, it rebound, testing, rebound. So you want to make sure it will be rebound. You wait for the candlestick, uh, trend will also candlestick to be formed. No? So as for now, here is the morning star candlestick or another term is doji candlestick. You can notice over here. A very, very small candlestick, a small body shadow, a small sh body long shadow candlestick. So once it's formed, right, it's rebound aggressively. So this is how the morning star fall, and then you can also notice here we do have a bullish and carving. So every time it's hitting the support level, right? It's not it's better for you to not directly buy it, it's better for you to wait your certain strength or so on it. So we do have a two example already. First, morning star. This is the what we call the bullish and carving. Bullish candlestick bigger than the shorting candlestick, and then here is another morning star. Morning star combined with the hammer, you can see that especially when it's hitting the support level. Here is the hammer, remember? Body, long shadow. So once this kind of candlestick form, it's very good for us to identify a trend reversal. No? So when you need to stop loss or when you think it's, it's time for it to drop, is another trend reversal candlestick to be formed. Here's an, uh, let me show you the resistance level first. So here is the resistance level, yeah? Okay, so you can see, yeah? But, Rich and Galvin candlestick have been formed. Okay, so let's drop back and then retest back on the support level. Here is what we call the evening star candlestick. Small body, long shadow. After it's formed, it's drop back. Okay, so this is how we identify uh, the trends on it. It's better for you to do some combinations. So this is a real example of morning star. Lah. So one is formed a morning star. There will be a tr chances for trend reversal. Same goes with the evening star. So this is all the webinar topic that we are going to discuss.